The Nissan Magnite, it's been selling like hotcakes and within just two months of its launch, it is a huge market hit. Now the reason for that is quite simple. You see, this is a compact SUV, a sub four meter compact SUV, and this is Nissan's first attempt. Now the second and more important thing is, it's priced really well. Nissan has positioned it quite aggressively on the market. Now that has made us think, you know, it's not just the compact SUVs that has come under threat. Because of Nissan's explosive pricing, the hatchbacks as well as compact sedans have also come under threat from the Magnite. So today we are going to pitch the Magnite against its usual rival, that is a compact SUV, and against a hatchback and a sedan, a compact sedan at that. So I have my colleague Divyank with me today. So Divyank, can you just brief us about all the cars that we have here? As you mentioned, we're mixing things up and we've taken one representative car from each segment. So representing the hatchbacks right behind you is the Hyundai Grand i10 Neos. Now we've taken the turbo version of the Grand i10 Neos because it is the best version in the lineup. And also with its 99bhp turbocharged engine, the Grand i10 Neos Turbo offers the best performance in the Grand i10 lineup. And the car that you see right behind me is a direct rival to the Nissan Magnite. It's Toyota's urban cruiser or better known as Maruti Suzuki's Vitara Brezza. That's because virtually both cars are the same. And the third car in this comparison representing the compact sedans is the Honda Amaze. I should clearly mention at this point that other rivals like the Maruti Suzuki Desire are also very capable cars. However, if you want the best sedan feel, the most premium feel in the compact sedan segment, then we think the Honda Amaze is the better option. Likewise, in the hatchback segment, the Maruti Suzuki Swift is also a worthy competitor. But we think that the Hyundai Grand i10 Neos is the segment benchmark. And that's why we have it here with us today. We've got all the worthy rivals to the Magnite. So let's hit the road and find out which one offers the best experience for a new car buyer, especially if your budget is below 10 lakh rupees. Now I'm behind the wheel of the all new Nissan Magnite and based on quick first impressions, well, I think Nissan has not quite hit the target with the Magnite. I'm sat in the top spec XV premium version and it has the turbocharged version of the 1 liter 3 cylinder engine. It's a 999cc unit. Now let me quickly take you through the plus points of the Nissan Magnite. I must say Nissan has done a very good job with the engine. It's not the most powerful, neither does it have the most torque. But even if you press the accelerator in any higher gear as well, there's a linear surge of power and the Magnite feels pretty quick on its feet. The second plus point of the Nissan Magnite is the comfort and interior space. The seats are very well bolstered and I must say the scope is quite perfect in terms of its width. So I am in a very comfortable place right now. The Magnite does score well in terms of braking. The braking performance is quite impressive and so is the ride quality. The suspension is pretty good. The ride is pretty pliant and the Magnite can go over most bad surfaces without the jerks and bumps coming into the cabin. Now let me take you through the downsides of the Nissan Magnite. First of all, the steering. Now, a heavy steering is considered good if you get good feedback from the front wheels. The steering should feel connected to the wheels. However, Nissan has added fake electronic weight to the steering and unfortunately, it makes things all the more problematic. Because, at the end of the day, there's still no feel in the steering. I have no idea how much the wheels are turning. And because of the extra weight, the steering at low speeds is very hard to maneuver, especially during three-point turns. Moving a little below towards the clutch pedal and the action is really springy. The clutch bite point is also really high up. So, compared to all other cars, it takes a lot of time getting used to the Magnite's clutch. The gearbox is not the most refined either and if you keep your hand on the gear lever you can constantly feel some jerks, some vibrations coming especially in the taller gears. Now as I said before the Nissan Magnite is a comfortable car to drive but while you're sitting inside and your attention goes towards the cabin and its quality I'm afraid it's quite disappointing for the price it demands keeping in mind that the top spec XV premium variant that I have here costs 8.45 lakhs X showroom. Lot of hard plastics on the dashboard and the door panels and uh, in terms of design as well, it's pretty disappointing. It looks like one or two generations behind compared to its rivals. 
and uh, especially this instrument cluster which really looks like it's been pulled out of a video game directly so all i can say about the magnite is that uh, it offers a good engine it offers a comfortable ride it offers ample space inside another point to be noted is we've also tried the cvt version of this 1 liter turbo engine and that in comparison to this 5 speed manual is far better so if you were to go for the turbo spec higher variant you are better off with the cvt option so as i said before if you're after comfort if you're after some good features and if you want a car that can seat 5 people comfortably the magnite is a good option for you but if you're looking for driver engagement you're looking for performance and you're looking for a peppy engine then perhaps you'll have to look elsewhere the toyota urban cruiser well it's a familiar car because it is a vitara brezza and uh, we know that car we have driven that car and this is exactly the same so uh, that means it shares the platform with the car it shares the same engine and gearbox options so this one is available with the uh, maruti's k15b motor which is a 1.5 liter four cylinder petrol engine naturally aspirated i should mention that so this is the sole engine option that's available with the urban cruiser or even the vitara brezza uh, so this engine it has really strong low and mid range you'll really like it at low revs at city speeds it feels quite eager and uh, power throttle response is really great and uh, the mid range is also quite strong uh, but you, when you rev it hard of course the engine revs it revs quite freely but towards the end the performance uh, tends to taper off but the mid range is quite strong and because it's a naturally aspirated motor the biggest of the lot here you can feel that thing it doesn't feel strained or anything it just revs freely there is a nice uh, spread of torque now the problem that we have with this car today is that the one we are driving is the automatic version and uh, that is the only fly in the ointment because uh, this is a four speed torque converter and i have driven the manual version of this car as in i have driven the vitara brezza and i absolutely love that because the gearbox is really slick uh, the clutch is really light and it's quite effortless to drive but this four speed torque converter well it does uh, tend to slow you down in the sense uh, it tends to hold gears and it gets really noisy even at city speeds it is like that when you're on highway you can feel the engine is uh, spinning at a relatively higher pace and uh, that's not quite comfortable in terms of performance of course you don't miss anything but it doesn't feel comfortable it feels the engine is strained and that's only because of the gearbox because uh, if you drive the manual version you won't have that kind of problem having said that in city when you're driving this automatic gearbox of course it's a torque converter it's very smooth and you can enjoy it Uh, and it's quite effortless so if you're not asking for performance if you're not mashing the throttle pedal i think it's going to be all right in city but um, in comparison i think the magnite with its cvt it is the better uh, drive train of uh, between these two cars at least so uh, that's where it uh, loses out but if you want a manual i think that is a better engine and gearbox option on this car what really surprised me is that despite the engine and gearbox combination and uh, the engine spins faster like i said and the gearbox tends to hold gears but even then it doesn't really affect the fuel efficiency and this car is really efficient whether you are driving in city traffic whether you're stuck in a jam whether you're on the highway doing high triple digit speeds the efficiency is isn't affected that much and i think credit also goes to its smart hybrid system which is available only with the automatic version uh, but overall this engine is quite efficient as well i have to say The Urban Cruiser is based on the Vitara Brezza and as a result the ride is quite pliant as in it's quite comfortable it's absorbent but it does tend to be a little bouncy at low speeds and if you go over undulations um, at really low speeds you can feel the passengers especially at the back they'll start feeling it and it's quite bumpy but uh, overall uh, you can go over rough surfaces fairly quickly because of the stiff suspension so in that sense you will kind of like it Now the good thing about a stiff suspension setup is that uh, it handles quite brilliantly and uh, I've driven this car on the track as well so I know this is a really competent chassis it feels like a hot hatchback so when you're driving this car fast around corners it is a really uh, great handler it's kind of exciting as well but of course it's let down by the steering because uh, it feels a little dead it's direct in the sense whatever you want to do whichever direction you point it at it will point the nose in that direction pretty quickly but it feels a little vague and uh, it doesn't have a lot of weight so in terms of feedback it's lacking but but in terms of directness it's quite good like i said the steering is direct but uh, the one thing that i really don't like 
is that it doesn't self-center naturally. So if you're taking a U-turn and it doesn't come back to uh, the center position quite naturally. That is the case with the Magnite as well. So I think that's just a minor flaw. But of course, you do notice it. Now let's see how the Hyundai Grand Eitan Neo's turbo really drives. It's powered by a 1-litre 3-cylinder turbocharged engine which develops 99 bhp and 172 nm of torque. Now, it's a light hatchback and 99 bhp means that this is a peppy little rocket. Hyundai has done a very good job with the turbo engine to make sure that there's bare minimum turbo lag and just from 2200 rpm, the turbo kicks in and the turbo surge is available in every gear. That's the best part about this car and that makes it such a beautiful and engaging car to drive. If I talk about the steering, it is electronic, it is light, but the engineers at Hyundai have weighted it so beautifully that even at high speeds, high speed maneuvers, the car feels really stable and in fact it gives you the confidence to push even harder. The ride quality is also very impressive. It's not too soft, yet it's not too hard to make your ride on bad surfaces uncomfortable. The gearbox is also very impressive. The gear shifts are very smooth, super slick, and it makes the driving experience all the more joyful. However, I feel that the gear shifter is placed a bit too far forward because in the forward gears, my arm is nearly fully stretched out. It's not a fault, but it's something that might take time to get used to. And you need to be really careful with the throttle because the slightest press makes the car surge ahead quite a lot. So in all, the Grand Eitan Neo's Turbo's performance is quite flawless and it's really hard to find any flaw in the car overall. And even if I talk about other components like the brakes, the seating, everything is up to the mark. Now you must be thinking that I have only praised the Grand Eitan Neo's Turbo so far, which means that it's a near perfect car. That's the point, it is near perfect. Now let me get to the downsides of the Grand Eitan Neo's Turbo. One of the points I mentioned earlier was the gear lever was set a little too forward for my seating position. Other than that, there are a few ergonomic issues with the car. For example, if I have to adjust my seat, I have to push my arm down in a very narrow cavity and my arm almost gets squeezed between the door and the seat. Another point of concern for me are the tyres. The Grand Atenios Turbo comes factory fitted with MRF tyres. Now the ride, as I said, it's really good. But I feel that the tyres are a bit hard and you could do with softer compound tyres. And the biggest upside of the car, the car's engine, the three-cylinder turbocharged unit, well, there are a few fundamental issues with the engine as well. You see, by nature, three-cylinder turbocharged petrol engines are quite noisy. And it's the same scenario with the Grand Itanios Turbo. On cold idle especially, the engine rattles, it's quite audible. And when you push the engine hard on high revs, even with the windows rolled up, the engine is fairly audible inside, which makes it sound unrefined even though it is not. And secondly, three-cylinder turbocharged units, from my experience, are never really fuel efficient. So don't be surprised if the fuel efficiency falls to single digits. Now the Honda Amaze that we have here, it's the petrol version. You can also have it in a diesel, but this is a petrol. That is a 1.2 liter, four cylinder, naturally aspirated unit. Now in terms of power and torque, it just delivers 88 bhp and 110 newton meter of torque. However, uh, when you drive this car, it is very responsive and I'm really surprised because the last time I drove the Amaze petrol, I remember it being underpowered. However, uh, this car, uh, because it has shorter first and second gear ratios, so when you're driving in traffic, uh, you really do feel that it's eager and uh, you can trundle around in town in second gear at speeds as low as 20 km per hour and it doesn't complain. I mean, it doesn't judder or tends to stall. So uh, in that regard, I think as a city car, it really excels. Now, uh, the absolute best part about this motor, of course, this is a Honda and that means it's IV tech. So the way it revs, it has those uh, inherent Honda characteristics. Uh, the mid-range is kind of flat, but once you cross uh, 5,000 or 4,500 RPM, well, that's when this engine starts to come along. 
that's when this engine starts to sing and it goes all the way up to 6700 rpm so uh, it's very responsive and it revs quite freely so you kind of enjoy it at the top end as well but i really like the way this engine behaves uh, power throttle response it's kind of good it's uh, very responsive so if you're driving in city you'll enjoy it uh, now apart from that what i really absolutely love about this engine and gearbox but uh, the throws are really short and it is very engaging when you're driving this car whether it's on a hilly road whether you want to drive enthusiastically whether you're driving it in the city it's very effortless the way this car behaves and that is very typical of honda you won't find it in any other car that we have here of course i think it's only matched by uh, suzuki uh, maruti suzuki but uh, the car that we have urban cruiser of course it's a suzuki technically but it's an automatic gearbox so the manual version if you're looking for i think the honda is the most effortless to drive and it has nice response low down the mid range is also kind of satisfactory and at the top it really is powerful in terms of drive train i think this is a very capable car of course it's a bit underpowered so you won't see triple digit numbers come on the speedo as quickly as say you'd see in uh, the grand iten which is the turbo but overall i think it is a very decent power train now because it's a honda and it's a sedan so of course the ride and handling is comfort oriented and that's immediately noticeable as you drive this car because the suspension is uh, softly sprung so when you go over uh, bad roads you can feel it's quite absorbent and it does the job quite confidently quite comfortably so uh, it's only at high speeds if you come across a sharp bump that's when it kind of crashes but overall i think the ride quality is really brilliant it is a very comfortable car now it's a sedan it's low slung but in terms of handling it is kind of a neutral handler and uh, now of course you can't go around corners really enthusiastically because uh, the turning is kind of lazy uh, the steering has good feedback though i really like it's very consistent and i like the steering because it is weighty so when you're driving uh, personally i prefer that kind of feel that the steering is slightly heavy so i like it but at low speeds like when you're trying to park this car in a tight spot well that's when you can feel it's a little cumbersome because uh, it does take a lot of effort now the amaze doesn't have a lot of features on offer and yeah it doesn't have all the equipment that you'll find in other cars yeah it doesn't look the best of course it's not a looker in that sense but uh, overall i think what i really like about this car is the simplicity because it is a car and that's what it wants to do it's a sedan it's comfort oriented you want to drive it every day it's very comfortable it will take you from a to b quite comfortably it drives really well the engine is refined whatever features are required it has that you have a touch screen of course it does feel a little ancient but it has android auto it has uh, apple carplay so you have all the necessary bits that you need in a car so uh, the honda maze for me and for someone who doesn't want a gadget or something to show off i think the maze is really a brilliant car it gets all the basics right and uh, that's why i think it's a fast free car the interior feels nice and cozy the quality is quite decent and overall uh, for the simplicity for its honesty i really think the amaze is a great car and one more thing the amaze is also quite efficient whether you choose the diesel or the petrol this one it's a small unit the diesel is powerful it's 1.5 but still that car uh, it delivers really great fuel economy numbers we had a long term amaze with us uh, which is the cvt diesel and in terms of uh, how it drives in the city the effortlessness of that car it's really commendable so if you are after efficiency and comfort i think the amaze diesel cvt it's really a great option because it is a great car and it drives really beautifully and now it's time to find the winner of which car makes the most sense so divyank what do you think what would you prefer out of this bunch well they are all very capable vehicles but if i have to choose my favorite i think i'll have to go with the hyundai grand i10 neos that's because it drives the best offers the best ride looks pretty good and more importantly it leaves a big smile on my face every time i get behind its wheel okay i get it that this is your winner but what do you think about other cars where do they lack what is missing in other cars as compared to the grand item if i talk about the honda amaze it is purely comfort oriented the engine is not very powerful the power delivery is very linear and for its price it lacks a lot of modern features the nissan magnite with the magnite nissan had every opportunity to make a cracking car but they seem to have missed the target the nissan magnite does offer a good overall package and that too on a good price but 
It lacks the refinement and finesse of its rivals. Now, as for the Toyota Urban Cruiser, the biggest fault is again that it is very similar to the Vitara Brezza. So it does not feel very new at all. And the automatic version that we have here with us, it's just not driver oriented. So it does not appeal to me. What about you, Shivank? If you had to put your 10 lakh rupees on either of these cars, which one would it be? Well, uh, honestly speaking, I'll also go with the Grand i10 Neos because I like the drive. This is the turbo version. And most importantly, like we said in the beginning, the Grand i10, it is the segment benchmark. So if you have that kind of money, if you're going to invest, let's say, 7 to 10 lakh or 7 to 8 lakh rupees on a new car, of course, the Magnite is there and the Amaze is also there. But I think the Grand i10 Neos, especially with its turbo engine, it has the best of all worlds in the sense it rides really well. Uh, the handling is decent for city usage and the engine has a lot of performance. Now, uh, other thing about the Grand Iton Neos is that it's feature rich. Now, what doesn't go in its favor? Well, recently this car was crash tested and it has got a lot of negative press because it only scored two stars. So I've personally observed this, that a lot of prospective buyers are not in favor of buying this car. Now, if you come to the Urban Cruiser, of course, it's not 10 lakh exactly, the variant that we have here, it's the automatic version, so it uh, goes over 10 lakh rupees, but it's a four-star uh, global and cap car. So in terms of safety, of course, this car is there. Now coming to the Magnite, of course, it's a great package. It packs everything. There are a lot of features. It looks the best out of the four cars here, and it has a lot of appeal. It feels very aspirational. It feels like a big car, and uh, pricing-wise also, you get a lot of car for what you're paying. However, some basics are flawed in here because the ergonomics, for example, are not the best. Uh, the build quality, the plastics and everything, it does feel cheap. And uh, most importantly, the engine, it is not the most refined out here. It's a three-cylinder engine. It has the performance. Uh, no complaining about that. It drives like hot hatch with the manual gearbox. So if you can live with its flaws, it's a great product. And it's priced, even the automatic version, the CVT that is, it's priced well below 10 lakh rupees. Now, coming to the Amaze, probably the least desirable car of the lot, but I have to give it to Honda. Like I said earlier, this car, I like it for its honesty. It's the most comfort-oriented car here. The ride quality is phenomenal. My problem with the Magnite and even the Urban Cruiser is that the ride is very bouncy. At low speeds, these cars are not comfortable. So overall, as a package, if you are after comfort, if you don't much care about the macho look of a compact SUV, I think this is the car to buy. So overall, all the cars have their strengths and weaknesses. But uh, if I have to buy a car today under 10 lakh rupees, I think I'll be inclined to buy the Grand Rite and Neos. But whichever car you prefer, just know what you want from the car. So the Magnet, of course, it's very desirable, very spacious and has a lot of features, but it won't offer you the comfort of the Amaze. Now, similarly, the Grand Rite and Neos Turbo, it has everything. Uh, it has a lot of performance, but it's not going to offer you uh, the kind of macho look, the big car feel of a Magnite or the Urban Cruiser. So on the whole, whatever you want from your car, you have to be really clear and then you can pick one. For me personally, I think the Grand Rite and Neos Turbo fits my requirements perfectly. So that's the car that I'll pick. Listening to your overall verdict, Shivang, I think I'll make the choice a little bit more simpler for our viewers. If you are a family person who has to travel around with multiple family members, then I think you're better off with the Nissan Magnite. However, if you're like us, young and want something more fun and that's better to drive, I think you're better off with the Grand Rite and Neos.